Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to The Sound of Drop, Fall into Poison. We've got, um, we made quite a bit of progress in the last episode, uh, going through the story in a slightly different manner. Um, new choices were available and we learned more from different angles and different stories. And also, for the moment, at least, we we two extra characters have survived so far, or at least not lost their sanity. <laughs> Um, so you know who I'm talking about in those cases. But uh, just to recap uh, what happened from the last episode. Um, so be because we'd seen the the prelude or kind of... A pre not prelude or pre prologue of the story where basically we got the backstory of Sayo and also Miku's story which seems kind of short. Um, but we still don't know her fate so I don't know if we'll learn more about that as we go on with the new sort of paths and further information we might get in this story but anyway so to recap the last episode uh we had a new choice when we went back to the scenes where kenji was going insane uh where we could call out his proper name kenji san for by mayumi and it actually cured him of his insanity he actually didn't go insane um so Ke we managed to save kenji from uh you know going cannibalistic on our ass literally uh, uh, but he opted for him to to stay behind and kind of recover himself regain his sanity in his own way or just think things through so he forced well not forced but he, he encouraged Mayumi to move on which she did we went back to the staff passage where we'd left Ken to check on him previously it resulted in a bad end when he was insane and we got eaten but because uh, he wasn't insane anymore, we just went back. But he wasn't there anymore. He'd moved on. Uh, to the the World Fish Booth tank, and we saw uh, Sayo confronting Reiko Saganuma, presumably about her father's death and murder. Um, but this is where the story changed compared to the first playthrough, uh, where in, because we'd saved Kenji, and Kenji was with on our side again, uh, he managed to help Mayumi. Uh, from being helpless, unable to get across to the other side of the fish world booth tank, where uh, where Sayo and Reiko were, she she couldn't get through before. But now uh, Kenji helped her get through to the other side of the tank by going through an, a ceiling grate kind of thing, uh, and they both crawled through. They conf managed to stop Sa um, Reiko from. Uh, murdering Sayo like she was still injured like she had her face smashed against the tank but not as f much force as before which resulted in her death so we managed to get there in time before Sayo died and she's alive and safe at the moment anyway um, she's unconscious and she's been unconscious ever since we saved her but uh, we learned that Kenji and Reiko they're both staff members so they knew each other they confronted each other Kenji kind of, uh, you know, knocked her up a bit in terms of knocking her against the tank. Uh, but we also saw, she was slightly injured by that, but we also saw that her grudges was kind of absorbed by the Red Mountain Aquarium. So we don't know what her status is anymore, whether she's still kind of insane in herself because she's evil, or whether she's just okay now but she didn't want anything to do with these guys anymore because she just cleared off with man we allowed her to escape which may be a bad decision we don't know uh but then uh, mayumi and kenji while looking after and cleaning up sayo's injuries uh sayo is un as we said unconscious and not woken up yet but during that time mayumi and kenji have had a quite a deep conversation about um well about the the situation but also Kenji has revealed that he knows a lot about the situation with the Red Mountain Aquarium and that he knew that it's a di different dimension created by the malice uh, on grudges of the cold fish as well as the director who was murdered here um, and all the, any, any other grudges of anyone who else has died here which may include Mari. Um, so he's learned all that but also um, he's also revealed to us other things about how the urban legends tie in and are actually fact kind of thing with apparently the only way to get into the Red Mountain Aquarium Malicious Area is on the night of a full moon which is one of the urban legends and apparently it's not possible to get in 
on the other 28 days before the next one, full moon, uh, it, it's not possible to get into the Rant of the Aquarium, which would make sense based on the backstory where Miku managed to get in on what I believe was a full moon day into the um, deep sea fish booth. Uh, but then when she came back a few days later with Sayo, they couldn't get into the Red Mountain Aquarium or the deep sea fish world fish booth at all. Which so it ties in some of the strange things are actually making sense now based on these explanations that have been revealed. But uh, where we left off um, is on a decision uh, that Mayumi has to make based on what Kenji has kind of discussed with her. Um, what they've decided is Himeno obviously can't make it out on her, of here on her own steam while she's still uh, being affected by parasite nematodes that shouldn't affect humans but the Red Man's in the aquarium, nothing makes sense uh, so um, she's Kenji has said he can probably carry Himeno out but he can't help carrying Sayo out even though I disagree with that because he's apparently a buff ass dude I think he'd be able to take Sayo and Himeno out with him he's basically put a, a decision on for Mayumi to make a set down a um, an agenda kind of thing where he's suggesting that they leave that hit Mayumi leaves with Kenji and they get Himeno and they all leave Manton Aquarium right now and then they come back when the next full red moon is coming which would be in 28 days time to come back and maybe rescue Sayo then um, so that would mean that they at least get out and Himeno at least gets the medical attention that she needs um, the other option is that we stay here with Sayo and Mayumi's kind of torn over it and they've both been kind of arguing because uh, even though um, Sayo's been quite cold she has helped Mayumi through the journey both of them have helped each other but Kenji also brought up good points where it looks as if Sayo as we know from the previous playthrough is that she's not really interested in surviving she, she'll she die for the answers that she wants relating to her father's murder back into the story guys I know that was a bit long winded but a lot happened um, so just as Kenji San says I should decide based on what is precious to me so based on what's precious to my Yumi uh, would be that well <laughs> she saves herself I guess now that sounds selfish but um, she, you know she's she's got to survive uh, but also saving Himeno and at this point she could walk out with Kenji as well and both all of them are safe <sighs> they're safe for at least a month though um, Kenji also revealed that based on what he's learned as well through his experience because he has been kind of dealing with Red Mantan Aquarium for years by the sound of things but he's been able to come in and out of Mantan Aquarium multiple times from what he said but the Mantan Aquarium curse everyone is cursed that comes in here and apparently in order to get into the Red Mantan Aquarium you have to be linked in some way to Mantan Aquarium so Mayumi is linked via Mari disappearing here and probably dead uh, in fact we, we pretty much know she's dead uh, Kenji's linked because of uh, f other friends of his that have died here. Uh, Himeno is linked because Mayumi is linked because they're best friends. Sayo is linked because of her dead father. Uh, so yeah, um, so they're all linked and that's how they get in and out. But apparently after a month the curse will claim you if you if the curse of Man Red Mountain Aquarium isn't lifted, which we've known from the first playthrough can be lifted uh, via appeasing the director's regrets and grudges, I guess. But we don't know how it's going to play out this time. So uh, what is precious to her? So what I think we'll do is we'll probably come back and do the other option to see where it goes in the story from there, whether it's a bad end or whether it leads on to one of the other true ends. But I think what we'll do first is we'll take Kenji's advice and we will leave for now with Himeno and Mayumi and Kenji and they get out and at least get Himeno the medical attention she needs and getting her out will also mean the parasite nematode condition should stop uh, so it will save those three for now and then within 28 days they're supposed to return and hopefully they can save Sayo we'll, we'll see what happens so let's go with Kenji-san I'll go with you, Kenji-san, to save Himeno. 
The reason I was able to make it this far was because the thought of saving her kept me going. That's what I want to believe in. I understand. As things stand right now, I thought that's what you'd say. I can understand. You have a strong resolve to save Amenochan. Yes, I've made my decision and don't want to face any further doubts. I'd like us to go, but please wait for just a moment. Alright, she's, so she's doing something with Sayo before they go. As I say this to Kenji-san, I squat down next to the girl on the ground. I take out the small keychain from my skirt pocket. The keychain with the starfish droplet, which will have the picture of her and her father on it. Mari and I, Hemeno and I, and surely this girl and her father, this is the shape these bonds take on. I think rather than me holding on to it, this girl should have it back. I close the girl's hand around the keychain and clasp both of my hands together. If I can, I'll definitely... Wishing with all my might, I stand up. Yeah, she wants to come back and save say at Sayo if it's all, at all possible. Sorry for keeping you waiting. You okay with this? The one who said we have no time was you, Kenji-san. Yeah, so she's... He's trying to put all the sort of res responsibility and decision on her, but she's kind of saying it was technically your idea to leave Sayo behind, which is true. I guess I did. Where's Hemeno-chan? At the stage. Inside a shed on the stage. From here, it'll be faster to go through the interior. We can pray that nothing happens to us on the way. But just in case, you should prepare yourself. Oh, okay, maybe we're not out of the woods yet, guys. Kenji-san, do you know the law governing the fixation of points here? What's that? Yeah, I'm like, what the, f what the heck is she talking about? It's a law that Girl and I discovered. If we use it right, we should be able to safely reach Himeno and escape the Red Mountain Aquarium. Oh, right. I think it was someone in that guy's diary. Uh, but we didn't really... I, I don't really remember much about it. As we walk, I tell Hiyoshi-san about the doors and the phenomena. Oh, right. Is it relating to the phenomena where the seems to either change times or different phenomena happen? Um, where a room could be normal or it can be extremely messed up. It seems he hasn't learned the law needed to rebel against Mountain Aquarium. He listens intently to my story with a serious expression. We leave the Fish of the World booth behind. The moment of upheaval behind us, I can definitely see that our fate lies directly ahead. Mm. That being said, is it a good fate or a bad fate? Well, it looks as if we're progressing, so it's not an immediate bad decision, but um, at this point, who knows what happens. Right, we're back. We made it back to the stage. Hey, Mano! Oh, God, she looks distressed. Please tell me she's okay. Hey, Mayu-chan. I cry out Himeno's name just as we reach the stage. Since the rule of fixed coordinates exists, does that mean we're safe for now? Alright, because they've entered the room where and there doesn't appear to be anything strange, I guess. At this point they've come in. Uh, so in this room, nothing strange has happened really in this room, so at the moment I'm assuming they're safe. I run quickly into the shed. Jimena was there, unchanged from the last time I saw her. Oh shit. We were so, I, I still don't get why it shows us this scene again, because supposedly uh, Mayumi laid her down in a kind of makeshift tarp, so like a bed, so she should be lying down rather than still sitting in this chair, but my you Eric. When she gets choked up, Himeno coughs up parasites. The number of parasites wiggling on the wet floor is even greater than what I saw a few hours ago. Well, that would make sense. You've left her here for a few hours. You don't need to say anything. I, I'm here to save you, Himeno. This conversation sounds familiar. Himeno's deterioration has gotten worse. Her eyes are hollow. You could probably say her recognizing me is a miracle. If we had been an hour later, what would have happened? What would have happened been? Uh, 
I don't think that makes sense. If we've been here an hour later, what would have happened? I think it's meant to be then. What would have happened then? It's scary just thinking about it. The ink, you. Jimeno hangs her head, her breathing ragged. You better survive, Jimeno. Let's go. Everything's going to be all right. If I touch Jimeno, the parasites will probably try to attack me as well. Even so, if we're going to escape, I can't run away from the parasites. Though it's not the best solution, I have to choose what's more important. As I try to lend Hermeno my shoulder, Kenji-san intervenes. I told you, didn't I? If you don't let me carry Hermeno-chan, you won't be able to react if something does happen. Kenji-san removes Hermeno from the chair and lifts her onto his back. His sense of stability makes me believe that, as he's so easily able to carry her, he could run with her much easier than I could. Isn't she a bit heavy, Hermeno Chan? You probably need to go on a diet. Oh, dude! Ouch! Burn! Jesus, she's got quite a decent figure from what we've seen. And damn, now is not the time to be insulting her. She's dying. She's gonna get mad at you. Jeez. My heart lightens up a bit as we joke back and forth. Uh, now's not the time for jokes, guys. I feel a tightness in my chest as I worry over Jimeno's condition. But you seem pretty reliable. Tell me that again later after we've escaped. Kenji-san smiles at me and we leave the shed. I follow behind him. First of all, there's no need to worry. Let's stay calm and get out of here. Following what he says, I run after him. Oh, past the World Fish booth, out at the gate. Somehow, we were able to make it back here again. Genji-san. Having come to just in front of the ticket gate at the entrance, Genji-san stands stock still. Uh-oh, what? Staring far past the entrance gate, he says nothing for quite some time. Sorry, let's go. Okay. Yep, they're, bu they're, cr they're cr crossing the border, crossing the portal. So that's the three of them out. As we step into the entrance, we are enveloped by a great light. I think that this light connects the two worlds. Oh. Yep, we appear to be back in normal Mountain Aquarium. It really is the outside. Yeah. The place we've entered is the genuine article, the real Mountain Aquarium. The amount of people has increased and we can hear the sounds of hustle and bustle. With the menu on his back, Kenji-san is attracting attention, so he moves for the rest area immediately. I'm gonna go buy some drinks. Setting Himeno down on the sofa, Hiyoshi-san walks off toward the vending machines. Himeno. Himeno is lying down, fast asleep. Yeah, so it sounds as if the parasite nematode phenomenon has left since they crossed over the, the portal. Looking at her face from the side, I notice something. The parasites are gone. They really were a phenomenon limited to that place. Mm-hmm. Looking at Hermeno's healthy skin colour, I'm convinced even more than before. She's been saved. As I think that, something wells up inside of me. Like I told you earlier, you can't let your guard down yet. Having returned, Kenji-san hands me a canned drink. It's hot cocoa. Kenji-san is holding a bottle of sports drink for himself. Hmm, we've seen a bottled sports drink somewhere in the story before. The hot cocoa permeates my body. It's sweet enough to smother the parts of my heart that aren't yet whole. Oof. God, that's deep. This hot drink is perfect for a building where the air conditioner is going full blast against the hot early summer weather. In contrast to me, Kenji-san, covered in sweat, downs his drink in one gulp. Although I guess we should take a breather for now. Giving the now empty plastic bottle a good spin, Kenji-san settles himself onto the sofa. Um, 
There's a question I've been meaning to ask. Can I? Oh, is she gonna ask one of the other questions I'm kind of curious about? As in more information as to why Kenji knows so much? What is it? My age? I think we know that. I think you're about 20. Well, that wasn't it. Although I am just a little curious. How old are you, by the way? He's deflected the question. Oh, he's 22. I'm 22. How old are you, Mayu-chan? Himeno and I are both 15. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. We're in our third year of junior high. Hmm. Seven years difference, eh? Well, what did you want to ask me? He is flirting a little. About getting in and out of the Red Mountain Aquarium. That's one of the things I wanted to know. How does he know that they can get back in on a red full moon? Finishing up our idle chatter, I get down to business. It felt like it was not an entrance we passed through so much as we went astray in order to reach the Red Mountain Aquarium. Coming back, we passed through an exit. What's the difference? Do you know Kenji-san? At first, I wasn't sure either. In the beginning, I also felt like I had gotten lost and wandered in. In the beginning? Then Kenji-san, today you pass through an entrance to get to the Red Mountain Aquarium. In other words, it's the general concept. I think the way we think about it is the problem. Can you give me more details? If I don't have more, I get the feeling that I won't know how to get back in on the next day of the full moon. No need to worry. Like we talked about before, what you need is a connection. If you aren't rejected by the Red Mountain Aquarium, then the way will open. And as long as Mari's still trapped within the grudge, then she can get in. The problem is the entrance. Think of it like an entrance and exit is just an idea we constructed. So the door that connects Mountain Aquarium and the Red Mountain is really in our minds. What do you mean by that? If I think of that vending machine as an entrance, then it will become an entrance. Is that what you mean? I point at the vending machine Hiyoshi-san brought me cocoa from. I thought no matter what happened, we wouldn't get into that Red Mountain Aquarium. It's still just too much for me to comprehend. If you're able to believe from the bottom of your heart that it is the entrance, then yes. Oh, really? I thought you would have to like go through the gate every time, like the entrance gate. Anyway, the border between worlds isn't by nature that distant. It isn't like the wall separating our house from the outside. From the moment we come, become aware of it, an entrance is created. It's fine for us to think of it as a door or a ticket gate, even a window or a hole. And if it's not something like that, not be able to see it as an entrance. We would think it strange to look at a wall and call it an entrance. Only a pure child could think of that as an entrance with all their heart. Mmm, that's true, yeah. You don't, you know, when you grow up you kind of think, ah, that some things are ridiculous, but... Children, they could imagine anything, really. In other words, Kenji-san, what you want to say is that because I thought this is the entrance, then any other way aside from the aquarium entrance disappeared? Kenji-san nods and adds, yeah. So then, that by that logic, Mari was quite young when she disappeared. So she would have ended up going into the Red Mountain Aquarium probably from anywhere she imagined. Cause, and then she died by hiding from Reiko in a barrel, which then uh, became the ocean through the phenomenon. Mm. If you don't acknowledge it, it won't exist. But as soon as you do, it does. Maybe Ghost is something like that as well. Her acknowledging Mari being alive. Hmm. Anyway, anyhow, Mayu chan, you should at least believe that on the day of the full moon, you can get back and forth to the Red Mountain Aquarium through the entrance. Oh well, that's good. Better believe it. Yeah, I think the fact that we got out was proof enough of that. Okay, so we're out, and then I think we have to wait 28 days? I take another sip of my cocoa. At the same time, I hear a loud thud at my side. Himeno! She's up! Yeah! Ah, sorry, sorry. 
is the sound of Ameno losing her balance. In the beginning, I thought she had fallen into a deep sleep, but I guess I was wrong. She's been awake the whole time and heard you talking. Ameno is laughing, but her body, which I help up reflexively, feels extremely feverish. She's been through a lot in terms of her, bo her body and general physical being. Himeno, this fever, it's awful. What? Fever? I'm telling you, I'm fine. Huh? This man is Hiyoshi-san, right? Why? I'll explain later, okay, Himeno? Right now. We better get you to a hospital. I'll call an ambulance. H hey, what? What's up with the two of you? Why are you so worked up? Yeah, I feel like I've got a fever, but I'm fine, okay? She doesn't remember anything. I had a feeling, I think, I think on the first good ending, uh, she didn't remember much about her experience. Well, she doesn't seem in bad enough shape to need an ambulance, Mayo-chan. We'll talk in more detail the next time we meet. There should be a place nearby where you can get a taxi, so take Hameno to the hospital. H hospital You're already weakening. It makes sense that you have a fever. Don't dawdle, okay? Kenji-san appeals to Ameno in a soft tone. There's no mistaking that Ameno has no idea what's going on, but she nods at his words. Oh, he's getting closer. Here, for the taxi. Oh, he's got money! Yeah! Kenji-san, seeing us seemingly Seeing us seemingly in agreement, takes a wallet out of his pocket and pulls out a 5,000 yen note. Jeez! He's loaded! Th that's not necessary. Really, you shouldn't. You can pay me back in a month if you want. Isn't it more important for you to get Himeno-chan to a hospital right now? Go look after her. Even though Kenji-san is worried, he's not as worried as he was back in the Red Mountain Aquarium. That's right. Surely the moment her body, weakened from a deteriorating condition, awakened, fatigue overtook her. Her high fever could easily be explained away as some sort of illness. Yeah, so the doctors won't have a clue what she's been through and they won't be able to figure it out apart from probably like a common cold, like a bad cold. Listen, I want you to promise me this. At the very least, I didn't lie to you. In one month, on the day of the full moon, you two definitely need to come. Around the same time as today, midday works fine. I got it. Really, thank you so much for everything. There are many more things I want to say. Kenji-san, who saved not just me, but Himeno as well. He gave us all this information and backed it up with his actions. Uh, I don't really get what's going on, but what's with this atmosphere? Ugh. Look. You need to understand that your body is weaker than you think it is. You can get more details while you're in the taxi. R right. Kenji-san narrows his eyes and chastises Himeno. He's the senior, he's obviously being serious right now. Watching Himeno actually get talked into something by someone else is somewhat refreshing. <laughs> Calming her down a bit from her mischievous antics. Well, later. We definitely won't fail. Right. Later. Kenji-san heads off somewhere before Himeno and I leave. Right. Oh, so we're outside Mantanese building now. It's night time. There's a taxi stand on the basement level of Mantanese building, so we grab a ride from there. Due to our high fever, Himeno staggers about, but unlike in the Red Mountain Aquarium, it's not bad enough that she can't walk on her own. With one hand holding the railing and the other holding mine, she is able to gradually make her way on her own legs. Well, that's a good sign at least. I'm sure that when we get to the hospital and she gets an IV drip in her or something, with a little rest, she'll get better. Thinking back on it, this is the first time I've ridden in a taxi on my own. Sometimes my parents use one, but I usually just follow their lead and ride quietly. Raising my hand, getting in, telling the driver my destination, paying when we reach our destination, saying thank you. 
As we head for the taxi stand, I review the procedures in my head over and over again and tighten my facial muscles so they don't look down on me or try to take us on unnecessary detours just because I'm a junior high student. If a man who were in my shoes, she'd be fine, but since it's me, I have to give it my all. Um, it's not like someone would hear me from inside the car, but I modestly raise my hand and call out. Without a word, the door opens, then the driver calls out to us. Uh, oh, just driver. Uh, <clears throat> that, that girl there, is she not feeling well? Alright to head for the hospital. The closest hospital is in the air in the area as Manton General. Should we go there? Yes. As the driver prattled on, talking very fast, we sat down in the taxi's back seat. Jimeno sat further in, and I took the seat closest to the door we got in through. Just as I had rehearsed in my head, we start off without incident thanks to the kind driver. Okay. So everything seems all good so far. Oh, CG of them together. The, the, the back window being red, lit by a red light doesn't make me feel so good about the scenario, but I'm assuming it's just traffic lights. They're fine. Well, she's looking better anyway, Jimeno. That's such a nice scene. Despite that start boarding well, we end up in heavy traffic. The Sunday night homebound rush hour. Wow, crazy. But I wasn't impatient, hoping it might get better as we sat in the car. Jimeno, though her breath was ragged, was able to talk to me in the taxi. If it's this crowded, wouldn't it be better for me not to go? Oh, and Mayumi's, Mayumi's saying, Nuh-uh, you're fucking going to that hospital. No, it wouldn't. You might become faint like you were back in the rest area. Mayu, aren't you worrying too much? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Well, it really was bad, you know. Ah, uh, that's right. Oh, achievement unlocked halfway there. Guys just showed up on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. I think that means we've got 50% of the CGs now with this. Um... Ah, that's right, that's right. Give me the details. I don't remember much beyond the fact that I was being done in by bugs. Oh, she remembers that. I do remember you showing up and telling me it was going to be alright though, Mayu. Within this car that makes walking seem faster, I tell Jimeno what happened after I got lost in the Red Mountain Aquarium. Jeez, I hope she believes her. I'm sure she will. They're best friends. Most likely because we aren't talking to him, the driver turns the radio volume up. But that way suits us better anyway, so I decide to start from the beginning. Finding the fish corpses, the tank rupturing in the jellyfish booth, being saved by Kenji-san, hearing Mari's voice, reuniting with Hameno, meeting that girl, the contents of the journal that staff member left behind, and the secrets of the Red Man's Aquarium that Kenji-san told me, I tell her all of it. Having given voice to all of these things, I'm able to put them in order for myself as well. We reached the point of the choice I had to make in the Fish of the World booth. When I tell him my decision, Jimeno's face changes. Oh boy. Yeah, that, I had a feeling Jimeno might not like this decision that we made where we left Sayo behind. Oh. Driver, could you possibly stop the car here? Oh shit. Commando clearly says this to the driver right in the middle of the congestion. Hey, Himeno! And Mayumi's like, what? What are you doing? As you were talking, I thought, that couldn't be about Mari-chan, yeah? I think it'd be best to check when we go back in a month. It's hard to say, but it's probably because this is a conversation about dimensions that transcends time. Himeno! If you talk so much, you'll get worse. Jimeno ignores me and continues. But what about that girl? She's living in a time unchanged from us. Then, Mayu, that choice, you shouldn't make it. I'm happy you saved me. I probably would have died, but... Is it really okay to abandon someone in trouble right in front of you? Shit. Now I have a bad feeling that this is a bad end, guys. Um, potentially. But yeah, I had a feeling Jimeno would disagree with this decision. But I... 
It was for you, Jimeno. I know that. I can never thank you enough. Out of nowhere, it's like you became my hero. It's not that I want to argue with you. I don't want us to split up like we did back there. But I can't just go on without saying something. Oh, God. Mayu, you'll definitely regret it. Shit. Uh, Jimeno's expression in and of itself is a serious one. Yep, she's pretty serious there. In her eyes, there's no color change, no hint of weakening. I sit there, unable to respond to Jimeno. Jimeno smiles a bit, then continues. Mayu, if you're tired, then I'll go save that girl. Who that girl is has nothing to do with it. This time, I have to show you my good side. Wait a minute. I think. No way. Her voice is so strong that it makes me wonder just how much she could have recovered after that little rest. Seems a lot, apparently. Himeno. Timidly, I touch Himeno's forehead. It's so hot, it makes me almost pull my hand back in reaction. It makes it easy to see just how much she's overdoing it. Jimeno's desire is real, however, her will alone won't bring her desires into reality, like going back and saving that girl, for instance. I'm sure she's wobbly from standing up alone. If Jimeno's resolution is to come to fruition, then there's only one way to do it. Even though it involves going against my earlier decision, I... Driver, please stop there. Uh-oh, shit, what are we doing? Are we going back? I say this before all my thoughts are even in order. During a break in traffic, I spot the entrance to a subway station. If I take that route, I can get back to Manton Station with no transfers. Mayu? Don't worry, I can definitely rescue her and make it back on my own. That's... that's not it! If you understand me, Jimeno, then I know all about you. You're overdoing it. I'm fine, so trust me. The taxi breaks away from the traffic and stops on the side of the road. I leave Jimeno the 5,000 yen I borrowed from Kenji-san and ask the driver, please take this girl to the hospital. I get out through the automatic door. Jimeno pulls on the hem of my skirt and calls after me. No. Why are you going alone, Mayu? I'll... If you were really that well, you'd jump out of the taxi right away, but you can't even manage that much. I'll go with you. No, you frickin' won't. Trust me. Wait for me. I'll carry your concern with me, Jimeno. Mayu, but... God, the emotion, guys. It's getting tense. I turn back to Jimeno and put my all into forging a smile. I don't want to go back to such a scary place. That's how I really feel. But Jimeno said I would surely regret it. She's right. Somewhere, deep down in my heart, I know it too. Kenji-san is no longer there. I can't rely on him. I truly am fighting this battle alone. Even so, if it's for Jimeno, I can't fail. Ice cream. We haven't eaten it yet, have we? Let's eat some. Together. Right! The door closes with a hollow slam, and the car returns to the flow of traffic. I gotta go. Without looking back, I run down to the subway platform. Getting off at the station, I begin walking down the street in the night. It's the same street I walked down mere hours ago, but it seems completely different at night. I couldn't have imagined that this would happen. Uh oh, what? Do you just mean that you're going back in, or is something about to happen? The full moon floating in the sky. Oh shh, I, oh, I can see it there, it's right there. Heading for Manton East Building, it feels like I'm walking towards the moon itself. That mysterious light envelops the world. Surely that other world is equally illuminated by the light of the moon, which is why the Red Manton Aquarium exists. I wonder if that means maybe the director was murdered on the night of a full moon. Maybe. My gait seems especially courageous. I believe that only hours ago I fought, overcame and changed myself. 
back at Mantanis building, at night has taken on a new feeling. Thanks to its illumination, the contours of the building are more pronounced, its sheer size is also more striking. Thinking deeply about the other world being born within this building, I feel that the light seeping out from the signs and windows is eerie. I'm home. Oh. Uh, well, you do live in the town of Manton, I think. I wouldn't have made such a joke this morning. I smile and giggle to myself. I've gone crazy. Maybe. Okay, so we're we going back in. Yep, looks like it. The faint scent of salt water. I've returned once again to the deep sea on the surface. Kenji-san said the path connecting the worlds only opens on the day of the full moon. In other words, there's a time limit. I sneak a glance at the clock by the counter. It's about 7pm, so there are only about 5 hours left. Around the same amount of time from when I went in to when I came out. Shit, so you gotta do this in one go. At this rate, I should have plenty of time. Should is the word that's worrying in me in that sentence, guys. Completing the process for re-entry, I stand in front of the ticket gate. This is the entrance. If this is physically an entrance, then conceptually it's an entrance too. Closing my eyes, I walk through it. I can feel a strong light from beyond my eyelids. Right. And so it looks like we're going back into Red Mountain Aquarium. Didn't think we'd be back so soon. Yep, looks like you're back in Red Mountain Aquarium. When the light stops, I open my eyes. I feel relieved to see that there are no customers. I think to myself how strange it is that something like that comforts me. I was able to get back in so easily. If this were a movie or a novel, the power of the moon would get stronger when it's full or something to that effect. Right, okay. M Mayumi, get back to the Fish of the World booth. Gotta keep moving. I take small steps, one at a time, in order to not to get careless. Huh? What the fuck? Kenji? Why are you here? Right, uh, so, uh, hmm. This is unexpected. And this is sending alarm bells off in, in my head, like... Why is he here? Because he hasn't... He's, he's definitely hiding some stuff. He has revealed a lot, but with this, it makes me more suspicious of him. I become aware of a strange phenomena. I don't know if it's right to call it that, though. Anyway, I spot a familiar shadow some distance away. Kenji, San. Without thinking, I mumble his name. But he doesn't seem to hear. Well, thank God, because... Don't know if this is actually Kenji. He might help me out. Is what I think for a brief moment. What is this? He's... Strange. There's an intense look in his eyes as he frantically looks around. It's like he's trying to find something. Or someone. He originally said that he would return one month from now. For him to come back intentionally like this, the only things I can think of are that he forgot something or that, like me, he came back to save the girl. Oh, I doubt he came back to save Sayo. However, he was the one who said we should leave the girl alone in the first place. It's hard to believe he would come back here on his own. Since he's come here so many times, it's hard to believe he would forget something. Or to think he'd come back to retrieve it if he did. Yeah, because if it was something he'd left behind and it wasn't urgent, he could come back in 28 days. I wonder why. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, this is... This is dangerous. My instincts are telling me that this is dangerous. Kenji-san, the one who suddenly changed as if he were possessed and attacked me. Fuck. That scared me. Holy crap. His eyes are the same as they were back then. Oh no. Right. 
So either he's come back and he's gone insane again, or Kenji is a phenomena. Although you can't really see his eyes from here. No, at that time, that was because of the Red Mountain Aquarium. I can't doubt him. I can't embrace these doubts about Kenji-san who saved me. That was something he couldn't help. It came from a will that was not his own, like a natural phenomena, just like a typhoon. Which is exactly why I couldn't ask him about that sudden change. The doubts tangled up in my chest made my legs feel heavy. At this point, I didn't expect my own doubts to be like shackles. No, that's not it. Kenji-san is my ally, so to speak. I need to cast off my doubts and open up my heart to Kenji-san. Oh no, is this going to give me a choice? Just a little bit more. Just a little. I decide to trust my instincts. When we split up at the taxi stand, the name tag he should have taken off was around his neck. He had told us it worked like a discount coupon. He probably forgot to take it off after he re-entered. But you found his pass in the souvenir shop, so this, this is like really suspicious. Kenji-san enters the souvenir shop. I can't imagine what he's gone in there for. Oh, the locked door. I watch over the souvenir shop from the shadows of the Tokyo Bay booth so I won't be discovered. My heartbeat gradually quickens. The wait feels long. Even though it's been no more than five minutes, thanks to this strange feeling of unease, it feels like an hour or two. If only there had been no change since my return. If only he hadn't had those eyes. I should call out to him, tell him what Hameno said and have him help me if possible. Mm, I don't know about that, Mayumi. There he is. I pay attention to Kenji-san, who has come out of the souvenir shop mumbling to himself. Uh-oh. Oh no. That child. Where in the world is she hiding? I have a feeling that the child he's talking about is Mari. Despite the fact that he's far away, his words shock me so much it's as if they're hammered into my chest. That child? The Red Mountain Aquarium and a child. Mari. I can't think of anyone else. The memory of Saganuma Reiko when she appeared by Hemeno back at the stage, also saying she was looking for a child, sticks out in my mind. <sighs> I had a feeling Reiko and Kenji are working together. They're part of the group that didn't like the director. I think. Why would the criminal who murdered the director be looking for Mari and why is Kenji-san also looking for her? The Red Mountain Aquarium. The murder of Mountain Aquarium's director. The mysterious girl who was the director's daughter. All of these scattered pieces, could they be part of the same puzzle? Maybe. I give a loud gulp. He might hear that. Ooh. These frightening surpri surprises don't end there. I continue to follow Kenji-san with my eyes. He heads for the staff passageway behind the panel we pressed earlier. At the moment he opens the door and is about to disappear... Saginuma Reiko! Oh no. There's the slender shadow of a woman there. As soon as I see her, I can't grasp why she'd be together with Kenji-san, the man who shoved her and tried to kill her before. Uh, let's keep going guys, this is getting more and more messed up as we go. Yeah, she's speechless. I briefly avert my eyes from the scene before me, but quickly return to looking through the crack in the door. Oh my god, no! No, no, no. They're putting their lips together. It's what society refers to as a kiss. The fucking... I knew it. So they're working together. So 
Kenji is definitely on the side of Saganuma Reiko and was against the director. So that's why he ch made made us decide to... That's why he made us decide to leave Sayo behind so that she can be killed. Shit. I think we've done bad, guys. The two of them, kissing lacks any romance, being merely sinister. I get the feeling I just saw something I shouldn't have. Yeah, probably. I lose sight of them as I'm wondering what to do and decide my next move. First, I should go over to him and find out what he was waiting on before. Once I've sorted out what's going on, I should still have time to find the girl. No, don't talk to Kenji-san whatsoever. I think you've got enough evidence to say that he's working with Reiko and therefore they don't care what happens to Sayo. Well, apart from her being dead. Uh, oh, good. Oh, good. Good. I wanted her to go to the souvenir shop to maybe see what Kenji was doing in there. Trying to not make any sound, I head for the staff passageway in front of the souvenir shop. Oh. Okay, Mayumi, what are you up to? As I'm walking along, my fingertips feel as if they've touched something. Uh-oh. It's right in front of the door to the souvenir shop. <sighs> you fucking bastard, Kenji. This is the keychain. So this is the keychain that she'd get Mayumi gave to Sayo before they left. Standing still, I pick up the small item. It's one of the prizes from the gacha gacha machine with the small starfish attached to the droplet. Flipping it over, there's a photo printed on a sticker stuck to the backside. A little girl and her father, that this belonged to that girl. And yeah, and you returned it to Sayo. And now Kenji appears to have left it at the souvenir shop. Could she be in here? But Kenji-san reacted as if she wasn't there. In the locked door, a locked room. Which probably means that Mari isn't here. Anyway, the fact that the keychain, which I returned to her at the Fish of the World booth, is here in front of the souvenir stand, means that at least she got this far. I take a deep breath. I have to go in and see. I have to go inside and confirm for myself. Ugh. Brace yourselves, guys. And yes, I was thinking about the poison frogs as well, Mayumi. But, uh, brace yourself, guys. This might not be pretty. The fear of the poison frogs dropping down again floats through my mind. One way or the other, if that girl is inside, then according to the law of fixed coordinates, we should be able to get out safely. Yeah, hopefully when you go back in there, the frogs are gone this time. Even if we get caught up in some phenomena, I won't be careless. Whether going or coming, no matter what does or doesn't happen, I'm risking my life. Just coming back here, you're risking your life, but at least you found out that Kenji may be betraying us. She's probably inside. I'm concerned about Kenji-san and all, but I should start by investigating nearby. Embracing my worries, I enter the souvenir shop. Oh boy. Okay, everything looks relatively normal at the moment. It doesn't seem like there are any frogs. As soon as I enter, I take a look around. There's no sign of the ghastly sight of melted frogs. Still, an air as if something bizarre and grave as a foot enters my mouth, causing my tongue to curl. I place my hand on my chest and strengthen my vigilance. This is... A blood stain. Oh no. No, 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 no. It's hard to see in the dark, but the deep red blood is spread out here and there across the floor. Shit. It goes all the way to the counter, like a path. Something's here. Oh no. That alone I can be sure of. From within the dark, something may jump out at me. As I take a step, I look around, left and right, using such great caution one might call it excessive. Clack, clack, clack. Is that her just, like, moving quietly? 
Yeah. The echoing of my own footsteps provides me some relief. On closer inspection, the blood circumvents the counter and continues around the back. Through that door you couldn't get through earlier. As I follow it, I notice something in the garbage can, can by the counter. This is... Kenji's Pass. One name tag has been thrown away. It catches my eye because it looks like Kenji-san's. The cover for it is worn down and dirty. He had it. He had his on when he left the souvenir shop, so it's not like he threw his away. Then why has it got his name on it, Mayumi? But contrary to my expectations, the name Hiyoshi Kenji is on it. So... Hmm... I'm just I'm just thinking out aloud here guys could it be that there's more than one Kenji the real Kenji and this is a Kenji created by the phenomena that's probably me thinking way too much but this this is very weird having my doubts I flip it over and immediately drop it oh god what on the back of the name tag written in big red letters with magic marker is what? Uh oh, what does that mean? Murderer. Shit. Kenji, you better not have killed someone. The letters themselves are like a curse. I don't understand at all what this means, but I don't have any desire to take a closer look to find out. Having probably thrown it away when he was here earlier, I satisfy myself with the thought that it is just a prank. No, it's not, Mayumi. I don't think it is. Following the bloodstain takes precedence. Remaining cautious, I peek behind the counter. There's nothing here. Oh, thank God for that. But then wh wh who's the bloodstain belong to? To... Uh-oh. Kya! Oh god, what is it? As I suddenly hear someone's voice, I shout without thinking. Oh, fuck. Now, now you're probably going to get caught by Kenji. Okay. There's no one below the counter, just two boxes left there. Right, okay. Three to one. Or three one. Maybe someone was just noting down a football score. I don't know what that means. Okay. There's no one behind me, nor next to me. Is there someone hiding in the box? Could it be above? Oh. As I consider this and look up at the ceiling, the only thing there is, is the sprinkler system. Appearing as if it hasn't been used in some time, it seems this place is in a different phase than it was before. Yeah, because you definitely had sprinklers before. But more important than that is the voice's owner. Oh, you recognize the voice. Without thinking, I narrow my eyes and look all around. Uh-oh. Hey, don't make a sound. Don't know who it is. Huh? Mari? Big sister, big sister. Huh? Wait a minute, what the hell? There's like two question marks? Oh, I'm so confused right now. Huh? That voice? Mari? The cardboard box at my feet skitters about. We have to be sure. What do we do if he's with her? Right, okay, so is there two people in the box? Oh, I'm so confused right now, guys. That voice? Is it that girl? By him, do you mean that Kenji-san who was here before? It's fine, I'm here alone. Oh my god, yes! Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll surely find out shortly, but I think it's Mari and uh, Sayo have somehow met up and they're in the box. 
So th this this episode has gone on for quite a while, so um, what we'll do here is, I'm sorry, but I'm ending it on a bit of a cliffhanger here, but I'm going to call this one right here, and we'll find out who's in the box next time. It appears to be maybe two people, since it appears to be a conversation with two people with question marks. Uh, so we'll find out who Mayumi is going to find in the box next time, and also if Genji-san has legit betrayed us, which it looks as if he might have, um, with Reiko. Ugh. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video guys. If you liked it, please hit that beautiful like button, give it a thumbs up for this video. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to smash the subscribe button there, um, just so you can get more content from my channel and get uh, notifications when anything I post up anything new. Um, that also really helps me out. Um, also, if you've got anything you want to ask me, um, if any questions or anything that, if you want to provide any feedback on the videos, post it below. It's really appreciated. If anything else, I'll, I always look forward to reading comments. Um, and yeah, so we'll continue this story next time, guys. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!